I think Wuthering Wave is a disappointment. This is coming from my first 10 hours of gameplay. I understand that making a video like this will make some of you think that I'm biased or just a hater, but I'll do everything I can to explain to you clearly why I think this game is a huge letdown. On the first look, it's blatant that the game is very Genshin-esque. I mean... <laughs> It's supposed to be the Genshin killer, man. I don't know what you what you want out of it. Like, what kind of game... I'm sure you're going to tell me what kind of game you're expecting out of uh, Withering Waves, but it's it's an industry, and it's the creative idea that if you, if you see something good, copy it and try to improve it. Don't make a one-for-one. One. UI is similar, the things you get to do, the vibes, the grind, it's all very much familiar if you're a Genshin player. Oh, this game really wants to pick up from a certain other game now, does it? They don't. I will say that at the very least, like in in uh, in rebuttal, like this game is just trying to be Breath of the Wild because if anything else, Genshin Impact came after Breath of the Wild, and actually, let me quick before uh, the internet fat checks me. Uh, hold on, let me see what's going on. Hold on, uh, let's see. Uh, Breath of the Wild. When did that game get released? Uh, uh, 2017. And this came out, released 2020. Okay, so fair point. Everything is, a lot of games are now trying to emulate Breath of the Wild now. Much in the same way that we have Souls-like games because it's copying Dark Souls. So number one, debunked. It's not copying Genshin Impact, but it is. it has the potential to be a Genshin killer because Japanese, I would probably say uh, different developers have different types of censorship. And between the two, I would probably say... I, between playing Genshin Impact on the channel and playing Withering Waves for, for, for the first couple of hours, for the first couple of hours, it is very fun to fight. However, what I find issue with is just the grammaric, like, uh, delivery of the English voice actors and just the grammar when you see the English, uh, subtitles. ...do a great job at hiding how much they want to be like Genshin when you see the same character progression tiers and battle pass rewards. This is going to be hilarious. Hold on. Let me do a review, a side-by-side -side review of this battle pass. This is Raisin, which they, which they put it on 5. What is 10? Gem, what's 15? The same thing, what's 25? Raisin, there is no fucking way. Stop! Any Genshin players here, open up your Genshin tab right now. Compare compare the Genshin battle pass against this. The thing to understand- Same shit, same reward, but again, it's- You're, you're trying to compare one pa battle pass to the other when ultimately this is a gotcha game, gotcha based game with uh, battle pass uh, stuff, and it's that that's how it works. Like I don't know what you're trying to say. Like, are you upset that this it has the same things because it's the same, it's in the same umbrella? So the o the only difference, the only com competition is like whether or not one feels more rewarding than the other. I could uh, shoot. You could have the same battle pass between Paladins, between um, Overwatch, and the upcoming uh, Marvel Rivals. They are most likely going to have the same type of battle passes and even similar uh, battle royale games like, I would say, Fortnite. But the pro it what matters is, does it feel better to play here than Genshin Impact? And that's, the, that's the important distinction understand here is that it's okay for a game to want to be like Genshin. I mean, who doesn't when it's the most successful gacha game historically and still is? I don't even like Genshin very much myself, but I respect any game trying to one-up the other as long as they do a good job at it. However, to top Genshin or become a more enjoyable version of it, the solution should not be to become like Genshin. We don't need another Genshin copy. Instead, any developer should learn from the things that they've done well, repeat them, and study the things they didn't do so well and improve upon them. That way, you are creating a better game. So. I would like in the comments down below to fi to just explain to me what kind of battle pass are you expecting from a game like Withering Waves? Like, sure, he's making a point and he shows proof that the chat is agreeing with him that the reward system for the battle pass in Genshin Impact is the same as Withering Waves. 
I don't play Genshin Impact. It's been a long time. But, yes, they are, they may be the same. But what kind of Battle Pass rewards are you expecting? Because this is a gotcha... This is a forever game. So it'll always have, like, repeating cycles of other genres within the same umbrella trying to do the same thing. Let's talk about what Watering Waves did that was good. Obviously, every player who have played or seen the game will tell you that the game has immaculate combat. Their the combat is very fun. Other games of this genre. These include outro and intro skills, a flurry of attack patterns, and the coolest part to me is the interchangeable extra skill. This skill comes from the relic system. The relics here aren't so much of meshing materials to become an attachment. Rather, whenever you fight a monster for the first time and absorb them, they turn into an echo. The primary echo you set will grant your character a unique ability to use in and out of battle. It's very cool. All the fight sequences animations like how the monsters interact with your hits and vice versa are all buttery smooth. There is an echo that gives you f fast travel. I want... I, I hate that. I have not found that guy yet. I probably might have to... F I might find him within the next like couple more hours of playing the game. But that looks fun. But again, like someone commented, can we assume that we can ride dragons in the future or like uh, flying abilities? Because gliding is fun, but if you can fly at the same time as riding a bike, that's pretty cool. And a fantastic experience. I know there are optimization issues, but at least for my PC, I kind of just ran the game fine. Now, beautiful combat is. I will say that uh, when I was streaming it like a not too long ago, um, it was. It was struggling a whole lot when I when it was a set at 45 FPS, but I wanted to, when I set it to 30, it ran smoother. But there were still reconnection issues because again, this game is relatively brand new, and there will be patches to fix it. But it's just funny to where like there was there was a lot of times in the game where it just uh, what is it? It dipped, and then. Uh, it caused my stream to drop frame rates. It caused me to like have quick sec uh, Quick moments of it disconnecting the stream and reconnecting and I don't even know at the moment how the quality of the stream was but I do record the the, the streams the same time that I do uh, do stream the game so Quality was very also paired with beautiful world design the places you can visit in the game are pleasing to the eyes most relevant comparison I can make is to Genshin, and I will give it to Watering that its visuals are clearly better. There's one more additional aspect to the game that a lot of people appraise, and I will too, but I will argue it's not a differentiating factor to sell that it's a great game. That is cutscene animations. When you enter major cutscenes, that... the characters are very expressive when speaking, and for the fighting cutscenes, the flashy and The dragon fight was really cool, I gotta say that. easily attainable in other gacha games. The Hoyoverse titles, Arc Knights, and many other games have in recent times delivered stunning animations in and out of game. So, I'll overall put it that the visual aspect of the game is top tier. It, it's it's very pretty to look at. Um, I think uh, the the gaming joints, um, I think Cynical on uh, on X, he showed a picture of his mom playing the game and she spent apparently 40 minutes of just running around in circles enjoying the environment, so that's very good. Now, the way, it's time to talk about all the painful parts of the game. Games are most often accompanied by a story. It's ever important because it develops the characters you like, the world, and sometimes hook you in on the lore and mysteries. Putting it harshly, this game is terrible at telling stories. Right off the bat, you're introduced to how- She Zay, she, she Shay, she Zay, this girl, I hate, I, I'm heavy, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with her English voice actor. And I've yet to hear her in her Japanese at the moment, so I can definitely download the Mandarin and the Korean um, voice patches later. But currently, her English voice actor is uh, displeasing. It's I uh, it's uh, it's difficult for me to hear her because th she was the reason I tried to do a English pat a Japanese patch to figure out if it's going to get better, and it did get better. But I was listening to the wrong person in Japanese because when I switched over in English and I talked to the magistrate's uh, bodyguard, like the top officer, the voice actor for her was very good and I missed out on it. Oh, the game revolves around sound, loading you with technical jargons in your front few hours. Difficult words are turn-offs for casual audiences coming in. Then, this game runs the typical storyline that you, the protagonist, is a mysterious figure who turns out very powerful, making both good and evil people interested in you. 
The protagonists, whether male or female, are pretty good looking, so that helps. But what doesn't help is that the dialogue you get to choose as the MC never feels very valuable. They're not mm-hmm. funny, they don't have that much of a personality. I understand the developers probably think that dialogue choices makes players feel like they have control over the game, but I'd rather sacrifice that control if they don't really add value to my character. The supporting characters... I, have- I agree with him because what's the point of providing dialogue... Um, options if they don't matter with the story because you're asking the questions and it may lead you through a chain of dialogue that makes it different from another person playing but ultimately when i played it at the moment the current dialogue options don't feel like it matters to the very least and it's it's vexing that almost the choice doesn't matter but when it comes to storytelling some of it is very obscure because again like like you said he i agree with him he, uh, we, I was bombarded with technical um, jargon one after the other, and it was, it felt like I was in the wrong classroom. Like I was, and they say all these things, and then they look at me, oh yeah, I forgot you're amnesic. But again, the amnesic genre is essentially an, this is an isekai game, and it makes a lot of sense to where it's following the trends of an isekai anime and this is a very animated game so that's i i discount the fact that i I forgive it because it's falling in the isekai genre in a way because of the premise of you are like amnesic you come you came from another world from another plane and you're apparently more powerful than others but that's just how it is are also not that fantastic straight up i'm not the type of player appealed by characters showing a lot of skin having less clothing they are good looking and it's okay to see some non-believer <laughs> if you if you ever were an anime fan you were first thrown into the man fools and the large mahongalo dudes of anime from young younger younger days and the censorship previously with genshin impact and um honkai is is fine is tame but this is the anime bs that we are looking for please such characters but it is appalling when all the main characters you meet except yourself always feel the need to show their shoulders their back their chest like this is the kind of thing a cash grab game would do and it's not the experience i want in a game like this this makes me respect that genshin has a good balance of this with some characters bearing some skin while others don on splendid outfits Honkai Stario and Arctis does an even better job at their character design. They, they do look good too in, hon- in Honkai. To make myself clear, I'm not telling the game to go full halal. Instead, it's about having the right amount of seasoning, haram seasoning, so that the game can taste so much better. Apart from the looks though, voices also not that great. The characters all have a general habit of speaking slowly, and they're not good at having an attractive personality. You don't need a tasteful personality in real life, but your characters that you play in the game needs it, because that's what helps you to make you feel closer to the game. The story video's experience in this game can be this. What makes me feel closer is loving, is being a part of the world, because like I feel the most connections with the world if I can have a good gameplay with it. The story is currently uh, garbage because it's very, it's very in your face and it's holding your hand the entire time. But I do like the segments, especially in the village uh, with Scar, where he is making you figure things out and he's not telling you outright. You have the option to force the truth out of him or you can actually follow what the game is suggesting you to do and discover the story for yourself to make your own conclusions. Scar makes it makes you feel like you're actually not being spoon fed when everybody else uh, that you've met before the villain is spoon feeding you because they believe you need the help. Describe with one way. <laughs> Bumpy. On top of the bad narrative direction, there are many fatal errors, such as voice lines cutting out before they finish, dialogue skipping without you clicking, the inability to scroll long text, which you can on PC buy left out and click drag your mouse to scroll. Mouse wheel scroll doesn't work for some reason, and you definitely cannot scroll on mobile devices. Yeah, that is really weird, because like, yeah, I was trying to figure that out. Dialogue didn't fit the screen, Lamau, I swear, what's with the Chinese gacha games and the fear of being concise? Yeah, I... Like I think I was, I think I was realizing it was a, it was a Chinese game, based on all the names, but the fact that it's very. I've noticed in much like the kung fu Chinese movies that I watch, they love to hear themselves talk, and no better way to express similarity is in the, 
dialogue that they're having right now because the fact that you can't even see the rest of the words i got very vexed when they're talking and i they, they're sometimes saying things i need to double check on but i can't scroll down the dialogue and see everything so hopefully in the next batch in the patch update next they will fix that problem because when you try to it registers as a tap meaning you'll skip to the next line what's this yeah like i can't I can read it scroll this the dialogue no fit the screen how do you there is no backlog how do you read if you missed anything by the way a big part of the game is that you can skip the story so if you hate reading stories and want to speed run you can but only for narration that the game considers less important if they consider it crucial for you to understand, you must sit through the story and feel all the pains I mentioned. Apparently, <laughs> I was really tempted to skip a story because, like, I wanted to skip a lot of the academy research stuff, but it was very pertinent. But then again, like, it was very pertinent to like the story because you were given trinkets, and you had to figure out, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? And even in the dialogue, when they were talking about how this esteemed guest, you weren't told from the outright who this esteemed guest was. So you are still left in mystery, and it's very handholdy to where, oh, if we leave crucial plot points in the dialogue, you're not going to skip, but you can skip if you want to. Filming this video, the developers added the function to skip all the cutscenes in the game. And that to me is not the solution because it sounds as if they are not committed to improve the story experience or are admitting that it's shit. If you play the game, you would have seen the clunky ways NPCs behave when speaking to you. And gestures and body movements that don't match their voices. Some it doesn't, it doesn't awkward. match. The biggest, biggest frustration for me is back face characters. This means that the characters who are speaking at the moment never... Like the mouths aren't even moving. ...looks towards you but show you their backs instead. This is a very painful way to sit through the story because you get disoriented as to who is speaking or who to give your attention to. Can you see the fatal error with this where they changed the camera angles three times? The first time when they changed the camera angle was facing this medical personnel. The second time was showing all the injured personnel. The third one is this current angle. And the reason why, the reason, but you have to understand, the reason why camera angles are changing almost all the time is a rule in cinema to make sure that it's tricking the brain to think something different is going to happen in the same way how in uh, comic book uh, lightings or, or uh, animes um, it's shortcuts to keep the players engaged to keep the readers and watchers engaged while nothing's happening this is a shortcut to where the person you don't have to animate the person's face uh, moving their lips now but even then before when we were facing this medical officer beforehand, her mouth wasn't moving to begin with. And for them to now flip it around, it helps with budgeting to cut costs on actually moving the lips. But you weren't losing money to begin with if you never showed the mouth talking to begin with. And you see the mega flaw as to how we're not even having a lot of lines with these two characters. And the main person speaking is the person not looking at me. I don't understand why. Is it because they don't want to animate the mouth? It saves they, money if you don't animate the mouth. the mouth. It saves money. So they, they hide it. Trust me. Showing the character's head. You're saving money by not animating the, the mouth, man. To flip to her. It's saving money, dude. You don't do it and you put it on these two. Being in 2024, I think it's a bare minimum standard that a story-based 3D game should understand how to have conversational manners. The manners here being if someone speaks to you, you can look straight at them. It's not to say that the characters must always face you, but it's a problem when the characters almost always do not do so. In short, the switching of camera angles in this game is horrendous. No, don't let them run off. Are we gonna chase them? <laughs> a crime! We don't want the big crime. The fact that we're saving money on voice movements you're saving money on because again like the changing of the angles the constant shifting of perspectives and saving money by not animating mouths is a animation uh cost saving and also that's just like how filming works you change angles almost all the time come on just hurry up Oh, 
That does not have the body language of a timid person. Was it like a bandit attacking them? I don't even know who I was speaking to. The camera angle didn't even show me who was talking. Now, remember that I told you that I can't remember certain names. Understand this. I'm Chinese myself. The thing is, the decision of this game to immediately dive their players to their first region being Chinese space is utterly strange, especially when you're releasing this to the whole wide world. There are tons of I, I say I understand where it is strange, but is it's actually a nice step in progression because you don't get any other any other like uh media like if you play a japanese game it's very obvious but if you but we don't get enough games from china that uh distinctly like show hey we are a, a chinese like uh influence so th from the uh four heavenly four heavenly animals that's a great integration of culture because like it's again it's nice that they're providing culture in this kind of a way but they they're not doing it they're not applying it well because this is of the first few games that I am now experiencing that is culture, that is influenced by culture, this specific culture. Chinese gacha games where the environment is set solely in China. But I don't think that's what Wuthering Wave is meant to be and will explore other cultures and places. Setting I hope so. The first is going to give your players a wrong impression. Even as a Chinese myself, the flurry of over 20 Chinese names is quite draining. This is why a lot of global gacha games don't choose China as the first region to explore. The Yue is the second for Genshin, Luofu also the second in Star Rail, and Langman or Yen is explored 7 months into the game for Arc Knights. So I really don't quite understand if the game is jeopardizing its potential of a player base by going to Huanglong first. To become better than another game, I've said that you either imitate the good things or you improve upon the bad ones. And finally, this game does the opposite in some areas, meaning they are worse or they adopt the equally bad qualities. What the hell is this side scroller for a time change rather than a clock? Things set up being in 2D instead of 3D, menu UI looking like it's from a cheap template online, idle voice lines playing every goddamn 20 to 25 seconds. Stopping to relax once in a while serves for a stronger rep. And no 120 FPS support. Seriously, again. I, I will say, like. <laughs> you're asking a lot if you want that much uh, FPS, but... ...with a PC client in 2024 of this genre capping out at 60 FPS. This video started with me explaining that this game very clearly wants to compete with Genshin, or experience a piece of its success. It uses the same business model as Genshin, having terrible gacha rates, sharing the same high prices for pooling currencies in today's economy, and the free pooling currency not being very easy to attain. <laughs> I will say it makes I understand where the pains are because it's following a model that uh, Genshin Impact has paved the road for. So that's the kind of marketing that during that that they're doing right now. The kind of uh, microtransactions that they're promoting. I can let it pass and not let it bother me because I've seen that in Diablo Immortal, Genshin Impact, mobile games nowadays. A lot of it's a lot of the reasons why. A game can maintain or sink is based on how they make money and no better way to make money than through uh, microtransactions but there's an issue where this game amongst others has a problem to where a lot of the Genshin a lot of the gacha game money being spent is on characters and on equipment where the reason why num Fortnite is number one microtransaction uh, revenue is because it's all based on aesthetics and it's not game breaking if you lose the gacha pool in Fortnite. But if you lose the gacha pool in Withering Waves or Honkai or Genshin, it m massively affects your gameplay. Ed Bulls is 40 fucking. Bucks. Another fucking Hoyoverse piece of shite. <laughs> for me to speculate like this, but it feels like the developers came into this with the greed of wanting to earn the same caliber of Genshin. Again, nothing wrong with that mindset because all of us want to earn money, but it's about how you do it. If the game is well polished, brilliantly made, then that desire is fully justified. But what I will say, the game is, I will say the game is pretty polished in terms of combat and. What keeps a person playing the game is whether or not it's fun to play the game. You could ignore it, much like uh, Connor uh, C Dog VA will say, he's very ungabunga. But if he can um, just jump into the game and just enjoy playing it, that's fine. But 
again, if the story may, or may the story can ruin a game, but that's like only if the gameplay is not as fun either. Like if you played Honkai Star Rail and the Honkai Star Rail uh, story was poor, then the RPG bottle for that won't be very fun. Much like in this action game, it's it you your head will go burr if the gameplay is not fun and the story is not fun. If both aren't fun, then that's a problem. If one of them is good, then you may have a chance. In this case, the gameplay is very fun and the story is currently rough. What it is, this game feels like it was rushed out to meet the company's expectations and it just turns out to be half-baked and sloppy. A brilliant real-time combat game with stellar Ooh. visuals. Okay, so if, if I... So the Inferno Rider is apparently a thing that it's like in the level 30, 30s, 40s, so... I can get like the mounts by then. Only to be ruined by the choice of making it gacha rather than a standalone game, and then to give it a conversely painful auditory experience, not giving players much reasons to remember it for. This is why I'm disappointed with Watering Waves. I'll still play the game to clear out the story, and I understand that the game is rushing out hot fixes every single day. People have said that the gameplay would get much better later in the game, but for anyone starting out the game fresh, why would they wait until 20 hours in the game to experience the good stuff when the first 5 to 10 hours of their game have been very painful? I hope Watering Ways will improve, maybe with the help of this video. And please share with me as well, how do you feel towards this game? I will say, this is a good video, but I do think he's not in, he's not, he's correct in how he feels. I will say for my experience, from just only playing like four hours at the time of recording this video, it is, it is, it's very fun for me to play the game to mechanically travel from one place to the other, to learning how to grapple, to glide, grapple, then glide again, to learning some of the puzzles. And I'm not a puzzle guy, so I can accept to not experience those. But then when it comes to story, story can be um, very brain dead to me. So currently, after in four hours of playing the game, it, it got very brain dead whenever certain characters were talking. But when I got into the village and when... I was listening to Scar. It was fun. It was fun listening to Scar like make me uh, figure out what happened to the village rather than holding my hand, much like my uh, protagonist, my uh, good if any deep characters. So I've been I've enjoyed it for the past few hours. I I think I'll play it again, um, but we'll see where that goes because again, like we'll we'll see how uh, Withering Waves. Uh, performs because it is a fun game it's fun to play and i like the i like that we're technically around and we're along the teal long uh area at the moment of the uh saint say you to you the dragon uh dragon of the west north west i don't know which cardinal direction he is but we're in that right now and so it's very fun so uh i'll uh, i'll drop the video and his links down below uh, that's the video. That's it. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll play I'll play more uh, Withering Waves. All right. Uh, that's it. Bye bye.